now we are going to see the laminate lamination test if you see basically we will be focusing on impact performance that is with respect to swing bag or tire test and ball drop test or fracture adhesion test when it comes to adhesion we will be checking pummel test and compressive sheet test, test. when it comes to moisture we will be checking with the pier and quadra beam test when it comes to de airing we will be checking bake test and boil test along with this we will be checking edge mismatch pvb shrinkage and lint lint or dust inside lamination these are all visual inspections now let us take each one by one boil test the purpose of this test is to determine whether the laminated safety glass are able to withstand exposure to high temperature over an extended period of time without changing its properties if you see first we need to take a sample which has to be tested after lamination next we will be placing the sample in a boiling chamber of 100 degree centigrade you can see in the second figure heat the three test specimens to a temperature of 100 degree centigrade the tolerances of the test temperature will be boiling water 100 degrees plus or minus 3 degree centigrade heating time is dependent on the type and the thickness of the laminated glass being used next generally speaking for sample up to 11 mm thick this should be assumed to be 2 hours for the thick samples that is greater than 11 mm this shall be determined by calibration so it is basically talking about the overall thickness of the lamination and the duration of the temperature if you see in the fourth slide it is saying maintain the test temperature for a period of 2 hours in the digital meter you can see now the temperature is set to 100 degrees and we need to maintain for 2 hours take the test specimen out and allow them to cool in the fifth figure you can see even with the help of thermometer also we can measure the boiling water temperature and once the boil glass has been boiled for 2 hours at 100 degree centigrade now we need to take take out the sample take the test specimens out and allow them to cool to room temperature by placing them vertically under natural convection and radiation system how we need to observe or make a conclusion the assessment of the test space, test samples may be carried out when the glass surface temperature is lower than 30 degree centigrade and how we are going to conclude and give the result inspect the test specimen at a distance between 30 cm and 50 cm in front of a white diffused background record the number and extent of the faults occurring in the interlayer that is in the form of bubbles delamination cloudiness or no not discoloration for each test specimen bubble area should not exceed 5% of the edge area in general 15 mm for less than 5 square meter panel size and 20 mm for more than 5 square meter panel size and the maximum dia of the bubble shall not exceed 5 mm so this is about boil test now let us take one more test that is a bake test the purpose of this test is to determine whether the laminated safety glass is able to withstand exposure to high temperatures over an extended period of time without changing their properties if you see for this one we need to make a test oven that is the high temperature test may be carried out by using an oven the tolerance of the test temperature will be 100 degrees plus or minus 2 degrees centigrade if you see in the second photograph heat the test specimen to a temperature of 100 degrees we need to place it as a laminated samples into a test chamber test oven and we need to heat the glasses at 100 degrees centigrade for 16 hours in an oven the heating up time is dependent on the load type and the thickness of the laminated glass being tested maintain the test temperature for a period of 16 hours so we need to basically we need to take samples of laminated glass we need to place it inside an oven and we need to heat at 100 degree centigrade for 16 hours temperature to be raised 10 degrees for every 1 hour and inspect the glass for change in properties so if you see the fourth fourth photo what the what is the procedure is, what the procedure we need to make is uh, suppose my glass is kept at 100 degree centigrade for 16 hours then after 16 hours i need to take out the glass i need to i need to check any changes in the properties of the glass if there is no change again on the 17th hour i will be increasing the temperature from 100 to 110 degree centigrade and i need to continue this process till i when i found that my lamination glass is unable to withstand the high temperature 
So the minimum requirement is 135 degree centigrade and we need to continue this process that is every hour 10 degree rise in temperature and inspection and until the until the laminated is able to withstand high temperature. So basically this is a durable durability test for a laminated product. Once the test is over and when we see that the bubbles are started to form, we need to take out the sample and no, make a note of the temperature. If you see in the fifth photograph, the test specimen is taken out and allowed to cool to room temperature and it is observed under a white diffused background. You can see this, this specimen was able to withstand 145 degrees centigrade. So basically the conclusion or the the conclusion or the result what we can find in bake test is bake test gives an early warning of changes in laminated quality of safety glass. Determines laminated safety glass with extended exposure to high temperature over an extended period of time. Its properties become sustainable, substantially altered. The change in properties is judged by occurrence of bubbles, delamination and cloudiness. So, in order to summarize, in bake test champ, we are going to take a samples and we are going to heat at 100 degrees centigrade for 16 hours. Then every one hour, we are going to raise the temperature by 10 degrees centigrade and we need to inspect the glass every hour. We need to make a note when the bubbles are started to form. So, the minimum requirement is 135 degrees centigrade and we need to keep on testing until where my glass is able to, my glass is not able to withstand high temperature and bubbles are getting started to form. So, this is a durability test and through this test we are ensuring that how our laminated glass is able to withstand over a high temperature and extended period of time. And the change in properties in the form of bubbles, delamination and cloudiness we can found. You can see in this report that the recording temperature of the appearance of the first bubble and the number of bubbles present for each laminate. For example, my temperature is at 100 degrees centigrade and the number of bubbles were found to be zero. When I raised the temperature to 110 degrees centigrade, the bubbles were still zero. At 120, zero. 130, zero. Once 140 started, I found there are three bubbles. At 150, there are nine bubbles found. So, we need to understand the precision is test at which the first bubble is formed is re reproducible at plus or minus 10 degrees centigrade. Now, let us take the pummel test which is used for adhesion. This is the one more test that is used for laminated glass. So, pummel test the glass laminate at minus 18 degrees centigrade is touched by repeatedly striking with a hammer. The test is imprecise does not measures only adhesion affected by PEB mechanical properties grading on a scale of 0 that is low adhesion to 10 that is a high adhesion and is subjective frequently the only low adhesion test used by laminators. So the purpose of this test is to provide an estimate of the PVB adhesion to the glass. The method is applicable to all types of PVB laminates in three ply that is glass, PVB and glass construction. The principle how it works is laminated glass is cooled to minus 18 degrees centigrade for normal PVB and direct, direct breakage for a centric glass PVB and struck repeatedly in an overlapping pattern with a hammer to fracture the glass into small fragments. The amount of bare or naked PVB revealed is graded on a scale of 0 to 10 with 100% bare PVB is 0 pummel while no bare vinyl is equal to 10 pummel. The procedure is a 3 by 12 inch laminate at minus 18 degrees centigrade for at least 3 hours is cooled. Then remove the laminate from the conditioning chamber and hold the laminate at 5 degree angle above the pummel stand. With a 16 oz flat head hammer or an air hammer starting at the bottom outside edge. Strike the laminate with uniform blows repeatedly overlapping half the previous strike area until the entire bottom edge has been struck. Move off the laminate half a strike area and repeat until at least a 3 inch wide area has been pummeled. Flip the laminate shortened for shortened and repeat the process. Both the inside and outside surfaces are pummeled and red. 
allow the samples to warm to ambient temperature before grading the samples. Evaluate the amount of exposed PVB on the surface of the sample that was struck. Compare with this pummel standards or use the table below. For example, if 100% free film surface, that is 100% is I am able to see the PVB, then it is, it is graded as zero pummel. When I am able to see 95% of the PVB, then it is graded as first pummel 1. 90 means if the percentage of film surface is 90, it is graded as pummel 2. If I am able to see, I am not able to see the PVB means it is graded, graded as highest pummel. If the sample is between the two of the standards, report the sample value as the half between the two of standards. For example, if my pummel is matching between 5 and 6, it should be considered as 5 and half. Report the values for both the inside and outside surface of the laminate. You can see in the photos, this is how you can see, this is the pummel rating photographs 2 and 3, where you can see, where you can see, you are able to see, the uh, there is no adhesion between the glass and the PVB, lesser adhesion between the glass and the PVB. The similarly, you can see pummel ratings photos 4 and 5, pummel rating photos 6 and 7, pummel rating for photos 8 and 9. If you see 9, which is the highest pummel rated graph, you can see there is a very good bonding between the glass and the PVB. The But this pummel test is not a standardized one because the pummel test is subjective and operator dependent. Only trained operators can be consistent but differs from individual to individual can still exist. Differences in pummel standards sets themselves can lead to a different values between laboratories. Laminate temperatures above minus 18 degrees centigrade can lead to a higher number. PVB moisture, PVB thickness, glass color and glass caliper can influence the interpreted pummel value. In order to make a pummel glass, in order to make a pummel test for a centri glass lamination, we need to go for, we need to check in the laboratory the different types of glass combinations like air side, tin side, tin side, air side, air side, tin side, air side, air side. So all the AT, TA, TA, AT, all these combinations we need to make sure and we, and we need to assure that in a particular combination, glass combination or glass construction, we are having a good pummel. Generally, the suppliers can help you in, in finding the pummeling of your lamination product. Next comes is next test what we do in our laboratory for lamination is the ball drop or fracture adhesion test. So, the purpose of the ball drop or fracture adhesion test is the laminated glass is given a sudden punch. And, frag and fragments from the under surface are collected and weighed. In order to set up this test, we need to have a steel ball with a 38 mm dia weighing about 225 grams. And we need to have a setup of square hardwood frame having dimensions approximately to those as you can see in the figure. And the procedure is we need to we need to drop a ball freely from a height of 4.88 meter so that it strikes the specimen within 25 mm from its center. We need to, in order to perform ball drop test, we need to have 10 test specimens of 300 by 300 mm. Prior to test, each test specimen shall be weighed. Keep the specimens at 27 degrees centigrade for 2 hours, for 4 hours immediately preceding the test. Each test specimen is turned shall be supported on a wooden frame as you can see in the figure. Out of 10, 10 specimens so tested, the number of specimens shown to be pierced in test does not exceed 4 of the way, four of which more than 2 are brittle and if the total of the fragments from the underside of the unpierced specimen does not exceed 0.5% of the total weight of these unpierced specimens and if no unpierced specimen yield, any fragment which individually weighs more than 0.5 grams, the consignment shall be deemed to have passed the test. So, we need to basically we need to understand when I drop a ball from a distance of 4.88, how the ball is going to perform on the laminate, whether it is going to penetrate or it is going to stick or it is going to tear the PVB and we need to 
collect the number of fragments from underneath the laminate sample and we need to weigh and we need to check and the weight should shall not exceed 0.5 percentage of the weight of the glass. You can see here this is the setup for ball drop test. So, we will be dropping a 38 gram 38 mm dia 225 gram ball from a distance of 4.88 meter and you can see in the second photograph how it is going to impact the laminated glass. In a similar way, the other test what we do for lamination is the short back test. You can see in the photo the setup used for the short back test. Here also, in order to perform this test, we need to have four test samples of 1930 by 864 mm. We need to hold the impactor at a height of 300 mm such that it will strike the center of the and center and then release the ball so that it swings freely. If it remains unbroken, if the glass remains unbroken, the increase and then increase the drop height from 300 to 450 in a similar way 600, 750, 900, 1200 in turn till both the internal and external, inter external layers break. The interpretation of the result shall be A. If the glass breaks, then note the drop height and conclude the maximum drop height. B. When the glass breaks, numerous cracks appear but no shear or opening is allowed within the test specimen through a 75 mm diameter. Spare can pass freely. If it passes, the test is failed. If it does not, then the test is ok. This is how we are going to do short back test. Now, this is the one more test that is used that is a PVB moisture test. PVB moisture test. This is a setup. This is the equipment what we use for PVB moisture test. You can see here the moisture test, moisture standard samples. In order to perform this uh, test, we need to adjust the analog and digital meter to zero setting. First, take the lower limit moisture standard sample and adjust moisture reading of the equipment as per sample. Then the upper limit moisture standard sample and adjust the moisture reading of the equipment as per the sample. Then take the middle limit moisture standard sample and check the moisture reading of the equipment. If ok, then proceed. If not ok, then repeat the steps as above. Keep repeating this procedure until the readings are found as per all the three limit samples. Ensure that the limit sample and the film which is being tested must be of the same supplier. Hold the two glasses in vice in vertical place. Hold the two, two glasses and place the film in between the two glasses and press it until the glass becomes a transparent. Then keep this sample in the equipment and take the reading of the moisture. Ensure the glass combination which are used for the limit samples of the sample glass combinations must be used for the film which is being tested. If different glass combinations are used, the readings will follow different values than the standard samples. This is how we are going to test the moisture levels in the PVB. Now we will understand the quality plans for the lamination and the standard what we follow is EN12543. The test parameters what we use in lamination are length and width. The standard what we are going to follow is EN12543 part 5 page number 7 and clause number 4.2.3 and the method what we use is a measuring tape. Here how we are going to measure the length and width tolerances. If my panel size is less than or equal to 2000 and my nominal thickness of the laminated glass is less than or equal to 8 mm plus 3 mm is allowed or minus 2 mm is allowed or if my nominal thickness of laminated glass is more than 8 mm that is each panel glass pane is less than 10 mm nominal thickness then plus 3.5 mm is allowed and minus 2 mm is allowed and for the at least one, pap, one pane of glass is more than 10 mm thickness nominal thickness plus 5 mm is allowed and minus 2.5 mm is allowed. In the similar way if my panel size is less than or equal to 3000 mm and for the glass thickness and for the nominal thickness of the laminated glass less than or equal to 8 mm plus 4.5 mm is allowed and minus 2.5 mm is allowed 
and for each glass pane less than 10 mm nominal thickness plus 5 mm is allowed or minus 3 mm is allowed and for at least one glass pane greater than or equal to 10 mm nominal thickness plus 4.5 mm is allowed and minus 3 mm is allowed. In the similar way, if my panel size is more than 3000 mm and for the nominal thickness of the laminated glass less than or equal to 8 mm plus 5 mm is allowed and minus 3 mm is allowed as per the standard EN 12543 and for the each pane of glass less than 10 mm nominal thickness plus 6 mm is allowed and minus 4 mm is allowed. In the similar way, if at least one glass pane is more than or equal to 10 mm nominal thickness plus 5 mm is allowed and minus 3.5 mm is allowed and the frequency of testing shall be one number in every 10 numbers. The next test parameter what we are going to check is the diagonal and the standard what we follow is EN 12543 part 5 and the tool what we use is a measuring tape. Here also if my nominal thickness if my dimension of the glass my dimension of the glass is less than 2000 and the nominal thickness of the laminated glass is less than or equal to 8 mm, 6 mm diagonal is allowable and each glass pane less than 10 mm nominal thickness 7 mm is allowed and for the each glass pane more than 10 mm nominal thickness 9 mm is allowed. In the similar way if my glass panel is less than 3000 mm diagonally and the thickness of the nominal thickness of the laminated glass is less than or equal to 8 mm, 8 mm is allowed and for each glass pane less than 10 mm nominal thickness 9 mm is allowed and for at least one glass pane greater than or equal to 10 mm nominal thickness 11 mm is allowed. If my diagonal measurement is more than 3000 mm for the nominal thickness of the laminated glass less than or equal to 8 mm 10 mm is allowed for each glass pane less than 10 mm nominal thickness 11 mm is allowed and for at least one glass pane more than 10 mm nominal thickness 13 mm is allowed and the frequency of testing shall be one number in every 10 numbers. Now let us take the next, the next test parameter that is the thickness. The standard what we follow is EN 12543 part 5 and the thickness where how we are going to measure is through the help of micrometer and we need to understand what is the interlayer thickness. If my interlayer thickness is less than 1 mm the tolerance allowed is 0 plus or minus 0 0.4 mm. If my interlayer thickness is between 1 to 2 mm, the tolerance is plus or minus 0 0.5 mm. If my interlayer thickness is between 2 to 3 mm, the tolerance is plus or minus 0 0.6 mm. If my interlayer thickness is more, more than 3 mm, the tolerance is plus or minus 0 0.7 mm. And this is also the frequency of testing shall be 1 number in every 10 pieces of glass. Next let us understand the next test parameter that is, that is a displacement or the offset. The standard what we follow is EN 12543.5 and generally we do we measure the displacement through visually or with the measuring tape. Here also we need to understand the nominal dimensions. The displacement is always dependent on the dimensions of the glass. Dimensions of the glass. If my panel size is between if, if my panel size is less than or equal to 1000 and the maximum displacement allowed is 2 mm. If my panel size is between 1 to 2000 mm, the displacement allowed is 3 mm. If my panel size is between 2 to 4 mm, the displacement allowed is 4 mm. And if my panel size is more than 4000 mm, the maximum permissible displacement is allowed is 6 mm. And this also, this displacement will be check measuring for every glass. Now let us understand the spot defects. And the standard what we follow is EN 12543. These spot defects also we will do through measure visual or through measuring tape. Here we need to understand size of the defect. What is the size of the defect? First we need to understand size of the pane we need to understand and the number or density of the permissible defect. So here we need to consider three parameters. And if my size of the defect we need to we need to understand whether the defect size of the defect is between 0.5 and 1 or it is between 1 to 3 and size of the pins if my let us understand everything one by one if the glass is having two pins of glasses are laminated and if my area of defect is if and if my area is less than or equal to 1 square meter 
less than or equal to 1 square meter the defects allowed the spot defects what the spot defects allowed are 1 and if my if my area is between 1 to 2 square meter 2 or 2 are allowed and if my area is between 2 to 8 square meter 1 1 square meter is allowed and if my area is more than 8 square meter 1.2 per square meter is allowed similar way if the, if the lamination is done with the help of three panes and the area of the laminated glass to less than 1 square meter then two spot defects are allowed if the area is between 1 to 2 1 to 2 square meter three spot defects are allowed and if, if the area is between 2 to less than or equal to 8 1.5 square meter is allowed and if it is more than 8 square meter 1.8 per square meter is allowed in the similar way for 4 panes and 5 panes also we can understand these values and the frequency of testing this spot spot defect shall be measured for every glass now let us understand the linear defects the linear defects what we for what we follow in the standard is en 12543 the linear defects also we will understand through visual or measuring tape here also we need to see the area of the pane and the number of permissible defects if you see the area of the pane that is if it is less than or less than or equal to 5 square meter and the number of permissible defects is more than 30 mm length it is not allowed for the area between 5 to 8 square meter only one number of permissible defect with more than 30 mm in length is allowed if the area of the pane is more than 8 square meter two number of permissible defects with more than 30 mm length are allowed and the frequency of testing will shall be for every glass now now let us take the next test parameter that is a short interlayer that is known as pvb shrinkage the standard what we follow is eis 2553 it is also through visual and measuring tape here we need to understand if it is less than 3 mm from the edge then only it is allowed otherwise it is not allowed and the frequency of testing shall be for every glass along with all these parameters here we need to focus on other water quality also in order to maintain the good adhesion between the glass and the pvb so the water parameters like ph tds and conductivity that has to be taken care ph should be 6 to 8 tds should be 0 to 20 milligram per liter and conductivity shall be 0 to 20 micro siemens per centimeter along with the water quality we need to maintain the temperature and rh values also in the layup room the temperature should be less than 25 degrees centigrade and the rh should be less than 25 percent in order to have a good adhesion and the durability on the glass and the frequency of testing shall be shall be the measurement of these water water readings as well as their rh and temperature shall be three times per shift or based on the load production that we need to decide Now we are going to see the tests that we do for laminated glass. Let us take boil test. The purpose of this test is to determine whether the laminated safety glass are able to withstand exposure to high temperatures over an ex extended period of time without changing their properties. The steps what we do is first we will be taking a laminated glass. We will be placing the first we will be taking a laminated glass and we need to have a boil test chamber. Here we heat the here what we do is first we will be placing the we will be taking inside the boil test chamber we will be filling with water and we are going to keep the temperature of the water at 100 degrees centigrade and we will be placing the these glass samples inside the water for 2 hours then we will be trying we will be opening the glass you can see here the temperatures you can see in the figure the temperatures first figure will show you it is a laminated glass the second figure will show you the glasses are kept inside the boil test chamber the third figure you can see the temperature of the glass is maintained at 100 degrees centigrade for 2 hours in the fourth figure also you can see the temperature and fifth you can see with the help of thermometer also you can measure out there is a 100 degrees the temperature of the water and once the 2 hours is completed at 100 degrees centigrade we will be removing the glass from the boil test chamber and with the with the ba background we will be trying to inspect the glass for bubbles haziness and discoloration the result what we can see is 
inspect the inspect the test specimen at a distance between 30 cm to 50 cm in front of a wide diffused background record the number and extent of faults occurring in the interlayer in the form of bubbles delamination cloudiness discoloration for each test specimen bubble area should not exceed 5% of the edge area that is 15 mm for less than 5 square meter glass and 20 mm for more than 5 square meter glass and maximum bubble dia should shall not exceed 5 mm a sample showing cracks shall be discarded and other test specimens shall be tested again next we will be understanding the next test that is used for temperature that is the bake test in bake test what we are going to see is the purpose of this test is to determine whether the laminated safety glass is able to withstand exposure to high temperatures over an extended period of time without changing its properties first what we will be doing is we will be taking a bake test oven and inside the bake test oven we will be placing the glasses at 100 degrees centigrade for 16 hours then gradually every one hour we are, we are going to increase the temperature by 10 degrees for example if i am keeping the glass at 100 degrees centigrade for 6 uh, 16 hours on the 17th hour i'll be keeping 110 degrees centigrade on the 18th hour i'll be keeping 120 degrees centigrade like that every hour i am going to increase 10 degrees temperature and i'll be taking out the glass inspecting and again placing back in the oven for bubbles or any discoloration at a particular temperature the bubbles started to form i will be noting the temperature the minimum temperature that glass has to withstand is 135 degrees centigrade and beyond 135 i need to see what up to what level my glass is able to withstand so basically with the help of bake test i am able to see the durability over the durability of the glass for a high temperature this is a fan which will help to clean all the dust on the wall on the head whichever person is going inside the layup room you can feel air so this is a cleaning procedure cleaning entry procedure now this is a lamination layup room or we can say assembly room or we can say clean room where we are going to join two glasses with the help of one interlayer known as pvb this is the pvb material mujhe milky pvb clear pvb coconut pvb do teeno de do abhi aap kaun sa pvb use kar rahe hain हाँ 0.76 सेवन सिक्स है वन पॉइंट ट्वेंट दो लेयर दो लेयर या इफ यू सी फर्स्ट दे हैव टेकन द बॉटम ग्लास एंड ऑन टॉप ऑफ इट दे आर प्लेसिंग वन पॉइंट फाइव टू थिकनेस ऑफ पी बी लेयर एंड फर्स्ट दे हैव टेकन द फर्स्ट ग्लास ऑन टॉप ऑफ इट दे हैव केप्ट वन पॉइंट फाइव टू दैट इज पॉइंट सेवन सिक्स टू लेयर्स ऑफ पी बी बी एंड नेक्स्ट दे हैव प्लेस अंदर ग्लास एंड दे बी मेकिंग श्योर दैट द होल्स आर मैचिंग एंड द एडजस्ट आर मैचिंग now they are going to do trimming that is pvb trimming by leaving 2 mm excess edge excess pvb we need to make sure that rh and temperature that is relative humidity and temperature are maintained in the lab you can see here you can see here the temperature is 25 degrees and the rh is 17 percentage it should be below 25 for a good bonding between the glass and the pvb now that is going for pressing okay you show me pura pvb ka pata clear pvb milky pvb coconut pvb now they are going to stick this production sticker on the glass wait wait they are going to stick this production sticker for identification and now it is going for pressing ye kya hai finish this milky way coconut and we will finish this hmm. coconut bhi ek tukda 
कोकोनट है कोकोनट है भी दे दो बोल रहा हूँ कोकोनट नहीं है नहीं है इधर आपके पास एंड नेक्स्ट और क्या है सेंट्री सेंट्री दो ए ए रखो ए रखो पॉइंट सेवन सिक्स है ओके ओके कम ये भी रखी कम इन पी वी बी वी हैव बेसिकली टू वेराइटीज वन इज नोन एज ए नॉर्मल पी वी बी विच विल गिव साउंड इंसुलेशन वेर एज अनदर लेयर इज ए नोन एज सेंट्री ग्लास पी वी बी द सेंट्री ग्लास पी वी बी इज द सेंट्री ग्लास पी वी बी इज नोन फॉर इज स्टिफरनेस एंड इट इट विल गिव एडिशनल स्ट्रक्चरल स्ट्रेंथ टू द क्लास सो यू कैन नॉट फोल्ड इट इज इट इज वेरी स्टिफर कंपेर्ड टू द नॉर्मल पी वी बी दिस ए पॉइंट सेवन सिक्स एस जी पी सेंट्री ग्लास पी वी बी एंड इफ यू सी ए नॉर्मल पी वी बी वी हैव बेसिकली थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ पी वी बीज One is known as clear PVB where the transparency is there. Next one is the translucent PVB. Means like this is a milky PVB. If I keep my hand here, you will not be able to see full features. And one more is known as coconut PVB that will give opaqueness to the glass. Iska bara aur. Once the assembly is done, the glass comes to pressing section. Now, if you see, this is the heating. Heat. Yeah, this is the heating section. Next, it goes to pressing section. This is known as nip rolling one. Next, again go. It goes to second heating section. Again, we have one more nip roll section. The nip roll section. Then it goes for unloading. and next it comes out for unloading you can see the haziness is there on the glass through this pressing we are deairing the moisture in between the glass and the pvb and we are doing basically primary sealing in pressing this is a temperature gun this is a temperature gun which will measure the output of the temperature output temperature you see now it is measuring 58 degrees centigrade Generally, it will be on an average of 60 degrees centigrade. Now, this glass is coming from assembly. Now, it is going to heating section. Yes. From assembly, it is going to pressing section. Here, it is getting heating. This is known as oven, heating oven. Next, it goes to pressing. So take that. Next, it goes to nip rolling system. The speed depends on the glass thickness and the combination. Now the glass is entering into nip rolling system.
the pressing pressing will be done as per the combination of the glass now it is a second heating second heating section this is the second heating section or zone and this is the nipprol nipprol to that goes to unloading during pressing per during pressing process primary sealing will be done through deairing process you can able to find the haziness on the glass that will be removed inside the autoclave okay now it goes to stacking now the glasses are getting stacked and they will be sent inside the autoclave एक बार खोल दो अंदर ग्लास है क्या खाली है you are able to see once the glasses has been assembled and pressing through nipproling system it goes inside the autoclave for secondary sealing inside the autoclave the secondary sealing will be done as well as the haziness will be removed you will be getting a clear transparent vision to the glass inside autoclave you will be having three phases of cycle that is first the glasses will be heated then it gets to holding state again it goes to cooling state you can see the fan is there in the, in the back back side and air will be circulating yes air will be circulating and we have pressure with a certain 135 degrees temperature and at 13 bar pressure the glass will be kept and at the time of cooling the pressure wall will be released lift the glass from the conveyor to the stacking with the vacuum suction cups they are lifting the glass and placing on the autoclave trolley 